Hi everyone. So in this video, I'll be talking about different types of heart block, which is very important clinically when we are managing a patient in a hospital, in our OPD, and also very important and relevant for our MCK examination. Now, let's start this topic. First of all, if I talk about heart blocks, we need to understand about the conduction system of the heart, which I believe you all know it. I'll just re-emphasize and just revise, right? The impulse is generated at the level of SA node, or which we call it as sinoatrial node. Further, it depolarizes the right atria around, right? And now this impulse also goes to the left atrial side with the help of Bachmann's bendel. And hence, both the atria, they almost uh, contract or depolarize simultaneously and hence what we get on the ECG is a positive deflection, the first positive deflection which is called as P wave. Now further this impulse from the SA node goes to the other area which is called as AV node. It relates to the AV node where there is some kind of refractory period. And now from the AV node the impulse goes to the bundle of his further into the two bundles, which is the right and the left bundle. The left bundle divides into anterior and the posterior fascicle. There is there's no fascicle on the right side. And now it further goes into the Purkinje fibers, hence depolarizing the ventricles, or you can say there's a contraction of the ventricles. And now this is depicted on the ECG with the QRS complex. Now the area between the P wave and the QRS complex is called as PR segment. Remember, it is PR segment from the end of the P wave to the start of the QRS complex. But if I talk about the interval, uh, I mean the, the area from the start of the P wave to the start of the QRS complex, it is termed as PR interval. And by default, if you see PR written, they are talking about PR interval. But if specifically they mention as segment, always remember segment is always shorter and interval is increased. The normal range of PR interval is 120 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds. Now, if I talk about the heart blocks as a broader category, right? Umbrella under which there are many other. The first one is the SA nodal block. Second, it could be AV nodal block. Third, it at the level of bundle branch, right? So bundle branch blocks, and then at the level of Purkinje fibers. But what we are emphasizing over here in this video, I'll be talking mainly about the AV nodal block. In the next video, I'll talk about the bundle branch blocks. Now, with that, uh, we need to know how a patient presents to the hospital. If we talk about the AV nodal blocks, there are three types, first degree, second degree, and third degree. First degree patients, they are asymptomatic. They do, usually don't present to the hospital. They don't have some complaint, any complaints, right? It is just accidental thing that they presented with some other scenario, let's say uh, gastric issues and they got a uh, ECG done. And then, yes, you come to know there's a first degree heart problem. So usually they are asymptomatic. But if I talk about the second and the third degree uh, AV blocks or the heart blocks, they have some kind of symptoms. Now, it may range from patients saying some kind of discomfort in the chest or maybe chest pain or maybe just lightheadedness, having nausea feeling or they can present with shortness of breath. And they can just say, um, feeling ha having that tiredness all the day. So these are some of the symptoms being presented. Now, if I talk about why it happens, the etiology of heart blocks. The first thing, if I talk about the etiology is you need to categorize into congenital and the acquired. Congenital, uh, let's say patient have TGA, right? Transposition of great arteries. Oh, and so that, that brings upon the value that, yes, you need to ask family history uh, from the patient. Secondly, if we talk about the acquired, very, very important uh, are the drugs, which you can remember with the mnemonic ABCDL. A stands for adenosine and amidaron, B, beta blockers, C, calcium channel blockers, which is non-dihydropyridine and which are the, uh, the verapamil and diltiazem, then is digoxin, and the last is lithium. So these are the important drugs. So 
it is very, very essential to know these drugs because some other, other times patients are on these drugs and then obviously you have to stop, you have to withdraw that, right? Now, the other causes could be infective where it could be because of, let's say, uh, endocarditis, myocarditis. Also, it can be because of the tick bite, right? So tick bite is very important and you, the, the disease is Lyme's disease, very, very, very important, right? And then it could be because of Chagas disease, which is also called as American trypanosomiasis. Now, other causes could be infiltrative cardiomyopathies, like as the case of amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, hemochromatosis. Further, it could be post-cardiac surgery, as in the case of valve replacement, or nowadays it is TAVI as well. And some patients after CABG. So these are the... Uh, some of the etiologies, even uh, ischemic heart disease or patient having acute MI, yes, they can also develop that. Now, coming on to how do we evaluate? Let's say patient presented to these things. The first and foremost uh, investigation always remains ECG. So you go ahead with ECG. And now if I talk about the first degree heart block, the patient's uh, ECG have constant and prolonged PR interval. So that means every other impulse which is generated from the SA node is transmitted to the ventricles, but there is increased delay at the level of AV node. And hence PR interval is more than 200 milliseconds in type one, first degree heart block. So it is increased, right? But remember it is constant, the PR interval I'm talking about, right? Now, with that, so every other impulse, every other impulse which is generated is conducted. Now, if I talk about the other one, which is second degree heart block, it is further divided into two types, which is called as Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type 2. Mobitz type 1, what happens is there is gradual prolongation. So initially it is small, the PR interval, then it keeps on increasing, keeps on increasing, and ultimately there is a drop beat. Or you can say there is no QRS complex. Or in other terms, it is said as P wave is not conducted, right? Or the impulse is not conducted. Or you can say there is a drop beat. So that drop beat is actually you're talking about the QRS complex. So remember, gradual prolongation, small, then big, then big, then big, then big. And there is further drop beat. That is type 1, which is also called as venki phenomena. If I talk about the Mobitz type 2 under second degree heart block, uh, there is definitely a drop beat over here, but it is following a pattern. Let's say after 2P wave, there is the third which is conducted, right? So there is a pattern. So one P wave, and then you can see the another P wave. Now there is a QRS complex as in this ECG. So this is termed as two is to one heart block. So these are, the, the, these uh, these arrhythmias or the heart block, this type comes under regularly irregular rhythms, right? So that means there is a irregularity. Definitely there is irregularity, but there is a regular pattern to it. There is a pattern to it. So that is second degree heart block type two. These are very, very important and, and can be lethal. They can complicate, they can worsen and go towards the third degree heart block. Or you can say complete heart block. Or patient can even have bradycardiac response or can have cardiac arrest as well. So type two, uh, second degree type two is yes, is somewhat a risky thing, right? I'll, I'll let you know how to manage. Now, third degree is called as complete heart block where there is no relation between the atria and the ventricles. There's no relation. That is called as AV dissociation. Atria is contracting on its own, ventricles contracting on its own. And hence, it is very, very, very lethal. It can be lethal for the patient. And you need to admit the patient. Now, if I talk about how to manage first degree heart block, as I mentioned, it is asymptomatic. You don't have to do much, nothing, nothing to be done. Similar is with second degree type one. You don't have to do much. But if patient has second, second degree type two 
or third degree, first of all, you need to admit the patient and then go ahead with evaluating the patient. Evaluating, as in the case, we have done the ECG. Second, we have to go with the echocardiography. If, let's say, you are suspecting myocarditis or pericarditis, uh, endocarditis, you have to go with cardiac MRI as well. Also, you go ahead with a uh, certain blood test as thyroid profile. You can go ahead with electrolyte uh, checking, then renal profile, then uh, let's say digoxin levels. So then you have to you have to evaluate. So first of all, admit these patients to the hospital and then keep on evaluating if there's any cause related to it. Now, further, if we talk about these two, the second degree type two and third degree, then if uh, still patient is not being managed and there is a bradyarrhythmia going on, right? You can go ahead with atropine or isoprotonol. But if it is ineffective and patient is unstable hemodynamically, then obviously what you need to go ahead is pacemaker. You can go ahead with temporary pacemaker initially and then later on you can go ahead with permanent pacemaker, but pacemaker is required in these kind of patients. And typically I talk about is third degree heart block. Very, very, very important. So this is how you need to manage these patients, but do not jump onto the management. First of all, rule out the cause. It could be because of drug induced and many, many patients they present to the hospital with that because they are on beta blockers, they are on uh, CCBs, I mean, these uh, Dilzem or Verapamil. So you need to rule out, you need to know the etiologies and then rule out the cause. If you're not able to manage, then only go ahead with this. I hope that was useful, right? That was a very crisp and concise one, but I believe that was useful. And in next video, I'll be talking about, one video will be about sinus tachycardia, I mean, how to manage, and then about the bundle branch blocks. Okay, and do let me know in the comment section if you need to have much more explanation to it or any other topic which you feel I should take up. Okay, bye-bye, take care, best wishes.